But it's also Festool Live, and welcome back, everybody. We got a heck of a program uh, going for you today. We're going to be covering the MFT3 and how to set it up and calibrate, square it. Okay? I just want to do my call outs like we always do. In the room, we have Big D on this camera that I'm looking at. Right over here, we have Chris on the secondary camera. Over here on the whiteboard this week, we have Brian Knudsen. He's our sales manager in the area. And also, right over here, he's online answering questions, is the man, the myth, the modern day legend, Brent Shively, our other trainer here in Lebanon, Indiana. Now, speaking of Indiana, we are opening, reopening for business. We are practicing social distancing. There's only five people in the room. We've been hand sanitizing, washing our hands. And Festool has been open for business, and we appreciate business, everybody. Okay, so I think I covered everything I needed to cover. I'm looking at my, oh, geez, I'm criminy. I got to thank the rest of the Festool team, from sales to inside sales, customer service, repair, warehouse, finance, executives, management, directors. Thank you, everybody. Oh, hopefully, everybody is staying safe. Okay, now, really quick, I want to thank you, and I also want to make sure you understand, this is IG Live, of course, because you're following us right now, but this will be a story afterwards, so if you miss something, you can watch it for the next 24 hours on IG Stories on Festool underscore USA, but also, we repost every Monday on YouTube, so pay attention to that one. It's going to be on LinkedIn, Facebook. And next week, equipment's in. We've been practicing. You're going to see a different production quality. And guess what? It looks like it's YouTube Live. So check our social media to make sure that it's not here if it's there. <laughs> Hopefully I made sense. Okay, next, I am going to, and when we were designing this presentation today, uh, I got some great input. I wanted to cover, like I do in every single training class, it's how to set up the multifunction table, the way we're taught from the factory. But somebody said something to me and I went, huh, that makes too much sense. I'm gonna sit down my six foot stick over here and why, why an MFT3? Okay, an MFT3 stands for multifunction table, three being the third generation of it. If you can follow me over here, cameraman, I first want to talk about it like this is a basic, doesn't come with any of the hardware, <clears throat> okay? But it makes a killer um, job site work table. It's a great clamping station. We, we make these, these are called clamping elements. They come with dogs. They fit in these holes, obviously dog holes. These are bored at 20 millimeter on a 90 uh, degree array. But we also make clamps, like this is our F-style screw clamp, okay? And a lot of people don't know on the MFT if I need to clamp something vertically with a screw clamp, I just put it in here and lock and load. I actually make these brackets to work with our what? Our vacuum clamp, okay? Also, over here, we have an accessory table that comes with the uh, MW1000. We made a really mobile version of this that you can carry your tools in like this. It comes with a drawer slide, okay? But it also comes with this table. But you can also link it. Guys, remember, I've talked about this. Festool's a system. You can link this table to a regular MFT table, so you get extra workspace. These are our ratcheting clamps. We make the screw style clamps in a deeper reach. The reason I wanted to talk about the clamps really quick, okay, was to, a lot of people don't realize we have such a choice in the Festool system. Okay, now, why an MFT? Now, let's talk about cabinetry just for a second, okay? Making wide, uh, cross cuts. Now, when you take it off a table saw or you use the track saw with the parallel guides on a sheet of plywood, if it's under 12 inches you need to cross cut it, I'm going to go right over here. Just let's span right over here. I'm going to go right over to my K-Pex. Okay? 
if it's less than 12 inches wide. If it's more than 12 inches wide, say you're doing a base cab at 600 millimeters or 23 and a half inches, okay, I'm gonna go to this. And I'm gonna show you how to set up this hardware. You combine that with a track, you got the rep uh, track saw, repeatability, you got a killer cross-cut station. Now, traditionally, you would put a sliding table attachment to your table saw to get that, that wider uh, cross-cut for like a base cabinet, or you would, um, you know, make a cross-cut sled. Could probably get two or three of those in your shop. Now, the other thing that I like to really point out to everybody, and this is what really brought me into the system, is when you look at the multifunction table with the router. We covered this, I think it was episode two, where I set up the 1400 on the MFT. Now, you don't need an MFT to run the uh, 1400 or the 1010 or the 2200 on the guide rail. You need a guide stop, <clears throat> but when you combine that with a table system that has an angled head, I call it a protract head, and a repeatable stop, then you can see how the multifunction table is more than just a crosscut station. It's a joinery system. It's a clamping station. It's the ultimate portable workstation. Okay, hopefully we made our point today. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna go through how to set up this table. Hopefully we get the right camera angles on this so you can see. And then I'm gonna show you how to calibrate it. Okay, <clears throat> if we look right here, you see this? This is a factory set stop. You have one here and what we call the back of the table, and we have one here on the front of the table. So when I'm traditionally standing at a multifunction table and I'm standing at the front, those stops are to my right. Follow me? Okay, so that allows me to put these two pieces on. All of this comes with the MFT3. <clears throat> this one, this part here, you'll see where there's the steel key. There's two <laughs> five millimeter hex screws right here, okay? I want you to pay attention to these, okay? There's this long black key that goes the long way to the stop. I'm gonna show you how to put this on in a minute. And I want you to pay attention to this knob here, here, and also right here. Because I can tell you right now, through the course of uh, being around the system for a few years, Anytime somebody says, hey, I made a cut with my uh, MFT3 and it doesn't hold its accuracy, <laughs> it's one of these three knobs that doesn't get, does not get tightened properly. Okay, so let's, let's go through it. I'm gonna take this and you're gonna see where everybody, and here's one of the little misconceptions of the, uh, the uh, attachment point. Everybody thinks that when I take this, this little pad here, this little steel knuckle, locks to the top. That's how you anchor it to the, uh, <clears throat> to the table. It's not. You anchor it with this. That's that little knob I was showing you. So when I take this, and hopefully get in here, I'm gonna slide that in just like this. I lift that knuckle off, and I'm gonna put it right to that factory set stop. Now, really important to understand this. Don't go and measure it from here to here and measure it from there to there. They're not the same. Okay, those are set at the factory. I'm gonna take this and lift it all the way up so I have access to these two screws and I'm gonna lock it down like that. Now, if I put a little bit of pressure on here, if that goes flying down or this is too tight to lock in, you've got these two five millimeter screws right here that I can adjust and boy, it's just a little adjustment like this to make sure the tension is properly. But this is the knob I tighten first, then I lock it down. Okay, <clears throat> the next part is right over here. I'm gonna swing this for the camera angle so you guys can come in here. There's my stop there. There's that long black key right there. It slides the long way to the stop, not the short way. I'm gonna slide it in here like this. I'm gonna bring it right over to the stop and I'm gonna tighten that knob first. Okay, and you're gonna see this little pin on here. I'm gonna lift that up. These two pieces are how the guide rail attaches to the table. Good. Woo. Next, I want you to see our guide rail. It has this bottom slot right here, okay? And you're gonna see these two holes right here, okay? Those are drilled into our guide rails, so in all our guide rails, so you can hang them on the wall. But we use it as a reference point, and I wanna show you why, okay? I'm gonna slide this on like this, and look, 
I'm going to put the pin in there. See how it doesn't move? Now, <clears throat> I could put it here, flush. I could put it all the way out here as long as the pin's in there. But what I like to teach people, and I'm going to show you why on the track saw, is we like to put it to the back half. Look right here. See up top, you see the plate? It's the back half of the hole. And there's a reason for that. When I tighten these screws underneath, these are five millimeter screws, okay? The only one I really tighten is this one. I use the short arm here because I can get a little bit of torque on it. I don't kill it, I don't break it, but I put a little bit of torque on there. The next one, when I lift it up here, <clears throat> I use the long arm of, a, of the five millimeter, so I don't put a lot of tension. And the only thing I'm doing is <laughs> I'm snugging it. In other words, it's off the pin, you see? If I had taken this and used a short arm here and put torque on this, I turned everything a quarter turn past snap. If I would have put too much torque on there, your rail should go right down on the pin without a lot of movement to get it orientated on the pin. Okay? See this? Watch. When I set it down, it should go right on there. If I had put too much torque on that secondary screw, it would have been, I would have been fighting it to move it over. You don't want any unnecessary tension on it. Okay, next I'm gonna put this piece on, and the reason I break it apart, this is their angle unit. The reason I break it apart is I want you to see this knob, okay? When I put this on here like this, I tighten it up. That V goes into the V groove. The next part is this, the protractor head or angle unit, and I slide it right in. You could put it here if you're cutting narrow pieces. You could put it all the way out here for wider pieces. But I put it right here and I lock it in. Now, when you open up the catalog <laughs> or owner's manual, it says you're going to get a 27 and 9 16 cross cut capacity with the stuff that comes with it, the hardware that comes with it. You see this little hole right here? I want to give you a little overview of the track saw to show you why we, I did that. So I'm gonna, I got the TSC here, and anytime I do any calibration with it, I always take the batteries off. Okay, so you probably know this about your track saw. When you first get your track saw, you got this on that rib right there, right? Okay, what you want to do is you want to calibrate the saw to the rail. And you see how I did this? Look, I tightened it, and I slowly back them off. I grab it here to check to see that there's no lateral tolerance. Okay, no movement in there. It doesn't, you don't hear any sound, okay? But watch this. See right here? If I take one of those cams off, look, I lose my accuracy. So the reason I wanted to point this out is we have, and we get this cameraman, come in here, see this. You see how the splinter guide isn't cut all the way to the end? And look over here, it's not cut all the way forward. It's because I've never cut them all the way through unless I have connected rails. Follow me? So that's why we set the guide rail here to the back half of that hole, that plate, so you can get that 27 9 16 and the cams don't come off. If you go like this to cut all the way through, you could lose the accuracy, you lose your lineup if possible, and hopefully you're following it. So I'm going to take this and set it off to the side. And hopefully that explained it for you. Okay, that's why we tell people to set it up like that. Now, the next part of the jigsaw puzzle, as I call it, is this. This is the guide rail. Come in here so we can see this, cameraman. See these two little T's like this? I'm going to just tighten it. What that does is when I turn it, it tightens it in. So I'm going to take it, and when we set the rail, we don't put it perfectly even. We set it, and I'll, I'll explain why. We set it to the back half of the hole right there. And the reason for that is if I set this perfectly even, yeah, I'm cutting with 90 with the track saw, but the beauty of the track saw is no matter if I'm cutting at 90 or anywhere between 0 and 47 on the TS-55, guess what? It tilts on the same trunnion line. So if I take that and if I left that like this, I would be cutting the aluminum bracket. Okay? You don't want to do that. So what you want to do is to eliminate that, you still have plenty of support. You put it to the back half of the first hole that's under the guide rail. I'm going to tighten it up. Now, right here, I have this knob tight, this knob's tight, but I want to show you this. See this pin? I have a breakaway. I have this pot right here. See it? What's falling in these detents? It's this little conical brass pin, okay? And that needs to seat at the very bottom 
of that detent, okay? And you see how it's spring-loaded? Look, I could take that, watch. I could take it and turn it and defeat it and get it out of the way. So if I don't need the detent, I loosen this knob, follow? But if I want that detent, I can take it, and you see how it falls in? This is something I always do. I always press down because that spring over time will wear just slightly, okay? Now, next part I wanna put on is this. This is the repeatable stop. You'll see it over here and over here with the router. Say I gotta do multiple uh, dados or mortises or I gotta rip um, uh, consecutive uh, lengths of, for cabinetry. I can reset that. You can knock it out of the way. I see people set this up just like this all the time. Okay, where they take the long leg of this and go like this. That's cool, but that's not what it's for. Here's something you may or may not know. Do you know you don't have to necessarily have it in there? You got the secondary groove. You can flip it over and say you're cutting not taller stock, but multiple thicknesses. Hang right there, I'll show you. Say I gotta cut two or three pieces of three quarter. Look, I got that impedes the forward momentum of that three quarter. And I have the stop just like this. It slides in. And now I have that repeatable stop all the way down just like that. So hopefully that explained it for you. All right, let me get these out of the way. <clears throat> Flip this back around, slide it in. I've only hit three people doing that. All right, I got my stop on just like this. Bam! All right. Got it? Okay. I'm going to take this. This is a deflector. All right? That goes right in here. <laughs> I always chuckle at this because I used to call this when I first started with Festool. I used to call it the channel. Well, you know what it is? Is you guys know this. And the older style hose, it was always ribbed. Okay? And it always would catch on everything. Now with the new um, braided hose, there's less chance of it catching, but this is a channel for your cord and your hose to go in so it doesn't have that catchy or that hesitation when you're cross-cutting. <clears throat> okay, now we have it all set. I'm at zero. I'm locked into that detent. My fence is tight. All my knobs are tight. Watch this. See that right there? Hopefully that camera sees that. That's called deflection, okay? It doesn't matter if the table moves. But boy, you put a piece of a long piece of plywood up there or hardwood, man, that's going to deflect. That's what this is for. Okay, this is the fence clamp, and you see this little. Hopefully, we can get that. See how that's got that little extrusion like this? It goes in here just like this. Follow? All right, good. But I got to take this now and anchor it to the table, and that's what that V groove is for. And this is what this lev is for. Okay, now I'm gonna slide that in like this. I'm gonna put it right back in there. I'm not killing it. I'm not pressing it forward. And I'm gonna lock it in. See? Now look, no deflection. And anytime I put wood up against here, a piece of plywood, I'm gonna get a 90 degree cut because I'm in zero. All right, now I have it set up against the stops. We calibrate these at the factory, but I'm gonna bring it down like this. And remember this, all aluminum extrusion is extruded off an extruder parallel, okay? So with this fence here and this guide rail, guide rail here. When I put the saw on here and knock out the lateral tolerance, I should get a 90 degree cut, okay? As long as this is at 90. Let me show you how to calibrate this. First thing you're gonna need is a good square, okay? And I always grab something like this that has a tall leg on there, okay? Follow? Now, obviously when I bring it in, look, you see how it's not square? Just like that, got it? Cool, so when I put the saw on there, guess what? It's not gonna work, I'm not gonna get a 90 degree. You'll see that in a couple of minutes when I make a cut, with the track saw, okay? So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna loosen this, I'm gonna make sure I'm in zero, and I'm gonna knock the tension off of this. Okay, now this sometimes, it is 
so minute I can't see it. So what I want to do is I want to loosen these two screws. These are five millimeter. Okay, I'm going to knock out the, the slop, like, I mean the, the tension. Okay, and watch. Look at the movement I have in there. See that? Now, my eyes aren't as good as they used to. I learned this from my buddy Les down in uh, Indianapolis. He uses post-it notes. He puts one in here and one in here, just like this. Look, see how that's tight and that's tight? Then I can go through the process of tightening this, just like this, still tight, still tight, and guess what? Now, I've eliminated my eyesight out of it, and I know when I cut, that's gonna be dead on. But don't believe me, let's cut something. Okay, so I'm gonna hook up, I'm gonna get my batteries back on here. I just happen to have the cordless on here. That is square, that is square. Now, what if I hadn't tightened this knob here, and I hadn't tightened this one, and I hadn't tightened this one? If that wasn't tight, and I lifted this to adjust the height, it would have moved off. It wouldn't be square anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, just like this, and I'm gonna slide her in, just like this. I'm gonna set my stop down here. I don't need to cut a big piece. I'm gonna lower her, and I always do this. Now here's something that somebody asked me, say this was a narrow piece, and they're adjusting this one. I always move my board back here, put my pressure on there. Make sure, you always gotta make sure that that pin is up in that channel. And now we're ready to make a cut. I'm just gonna wail my dust extractor over here. Grab a cord. Yeah, baby. Woo! Let's see if I got enough. Oh, man. Let me turn that horn. There we go. And let's get cutting. I didn't know if I have time today to make some cuts, but I'm glad I do. Excellent. We're writing a lot of questions on the board. I will get to those in a few minutes. I just want to make a cut. Oh! <laughs> a, cordless, a cordless saw doesn't need a cord. Oh my god. Oh, that's funny as heck. <sighs> okay, I want to see if I got Bluetooth going. Let's just put it on auto. That should be synced. Okay. Uh, I think yesterday or the day before I did a, a video on IG on syncing everything. I got a Bluetooth battery on here. I'm just going to turn this on. Listen. <laughs> it's synced over there. Hey, B, can you unplug that dust extractor over there? Just out of the wall. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So I want to sync the TS55, okay, or TSC55 to this module here. Hopefully we can get in here. Look, you just hit the button like this. See how it's going slow? I'm just going to take that and watch. Now I'm synced. So I'm going to hook up my, my dust extraction and let's make a cut. I've already set the depth. We've covered that before. And, I don't, and guys, we're going to be doing a lot of IG lives on the, um, the saw. Now, I want to I wanna call somebody out. I would always hear from people, man, you're always catching the hose on the rail. I very rarely had that problem. It's because about 12 years ago, I was watching somebody. His name was Alan Kensley. And he would always take the hose and the cord and wrap it up around his arm. I've been doing that ever since. I've never had a situation. So I'm going to start it. You always start the saw up. You plunge. And you make the cut. And when you use, and this is the beauty of it. This is the beauty of the track saw. This is the beauty of the track. If we look in here, and hopefully this comes out on camera. Uh, somebody asked me last night, what's your favorite tool at Festool? And it always will be the track saw because of this cut. There is no chip out at all. And that is of, and if we look right here, that veneer gets thinner every single week. Okay? So that's the... That's the setup of the MFT. Um, <clears throat> same thing, using it with a router. Okay, you'll get perfect mortises, dados, grooves, blind dados, sliding dovetails. Okay, whew, all right. So, first question, <laughs> can, can we build our own MFT top? 
Absolutely. Okay, but I may warn you on a couple of things. You see this? These are CNC'd in. They're 20 millimeter bore. Okay, we sell replacement perforated tops. Now, you're going to notice when I set depth, okay, I'm just kerfing that, that board. Okay, now, if I continually cut here, I'll have a cut line here. Do you know that that is attached to this frame with four screws? I could take that and flip it around. So you, or turn it upside down. So you may not have to replace it for quite some time. We, 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 we sell them. Uh, it's a replacement part on ECAT system on our, but I know if you want to go and make your own, you can, okay? Just make sure that these are bored absolutely precisely. I've done it once at home and I came in and I bought one. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, oh, that's a good one. Um, you're going to notice on all my MFTs in here, I do not have cross members, okay, except for one. Uh, I usually, if I'm hand planing something, I'm usually right here, okay? But you're going to notice, if we come over here, there's a little bit of a wobble this way, okay? And I totally understand it. But I don't, for me, cross members aren't, don't make that big a difference, but they come... And this is another version of the MFT. It's the MFT Contoro. This top and whole frame is sold for our um, portable edge bander, the K65. You put it in here, it literally takes 20 seconds. If, if I go slow to insert that, you can do um, small parts on here, but you can also do beveled goods. With it comes the cross members. Okay, and once again, you still have the support like you do here in this orientation where I don't have cross members, but boy, that, that seizes up that movement this way. Okay, hopefully that answered your question properly, and you can get them for any table. Okay, so how do you cut narrow pieces? <laughs> Excellent question. Um, let me get a couple people. Let me get oh, a couple people. Let me, hey, let me get some people. No, let me get some pieces right here. Say I got to cut some narrow pieces. This is 50 millimeter or two inch. Okay, now, there's sometimes when people come into a training class and they look at this, they go, oh, I'm having such a trouble cutting narrow pieces. And I'm like, why? I automatically do this. Look, same thickness wood because they don't, they think there's too much uh, deflection or flexion in there. Take another piece and put it right underneath. See how that sucks it up like that? And it's perfect. Okay, and hopefully that, that got it. Oh, here's one. And I have one of these at home. <clears throat> There's an older MFT, okay, version. There was an MFT 1080 and MFT 800. On that one, the, oh, there's a lot of differences. Uh, they're not, there's some huge differences, a couple minor differences. Uh, the height's a little bit lower. Um, the protractor head only swings one way. But the process I went through about squaring it, getting a good square, making sure it's 90, there's, and you'll see it, there's a little square emblem on it. I don't have one here. There's a little square emblem with one screw, and that's how you square it. Okay, but go through the same thing. Make sure the knobs are tight, the three knobs. Okay, make sure that that pin is down in zero, and make sure there's no tension on the, the rail clamp. Okay? Cool. How are we looking? Woo! Oh my goodness. I always, I always look at this. Boy, we have people from Ecuador this week. We have people from Sweden this week. Um, wow. Thank you for, oh, wrong camera? Right here. Thank you for watching. Oh, no, okay. Now, there is a question that I preloaded here that we do get quite often. And I want to make sure you understand this. You see this, this is your MFT-3. If you have one or you're looking to get one, the MFT-3 can come as a basic like this. It's a few dollars less, okay? But the MFT-3, this is what makes it is the hardware package. <clears throat> There's a point I'm getting at here is you don't have to buy just one. <laughs> you can buy multiples, all right? Um, and the thing is, is you can connect them. Remember I told you a statistic or a specification in the beginning, you're going to get 27 and 9 sixteenths. What if you have a longer rail? What if you bought a track saw, came with a 1400 rail, 
Well, you get a 75. It came with a, a 1900 millimeter rail. Okay? And you want to make some long cross cuts. Okay? It's easy. You can connect them. All right? Here's the connector for the MFT. Okay? It slides in here. It's two hexes. You tighten it up. You bang the other one right here. You take this and you put it out here. And guess what? Now you have a long cross cut. What if you take that 1400 rail and you could set it up this way? Okay, but you, your MFT can be as big as you want. Okay, now that's the MFT. The con and this is the question we get all the time. The connectors for the rail are not the same. They're a lot thinner. And I love pointing this out because this, this is Fest Tool Engineering at its best. They, they know knuckleheads like me. Look, see these screws? They're slotted. Don't replace them with hexes. There's a reason they're slotted. When you're connecting rails, and by the way, I'm not going to show you. That's another Festool Live on track saws, okay? When you're connecting rails, okay, if, I, if in, what happens when you put too much torque on a slotted screw? You cam it out. What this does is this goes into your brain saying, I can't put too much torque on there. Because if this was a hex, and I put a connector in here like this, and I tighten it with a hex, you would have dimples all the way down. Every time I've shown this, and I know somebody who's replaced hex nuts in here, they have dimples on their rail. That is just Festool Engineering telling you, don't over tighten them. Okay, wow, we got people from Norway, Brazil, Germany, and Chile. And I want to thank you. What else? Oh, I have another question going up. If I lose a screw, uh, Brian Knutson is a slow printer. Okay, if I lose a screw, can I order? Absolutely. You can do one of two things. You can order from one of our system partners, okay, and they'll order it from us, or when it's a pot, you can order it direct from us on our eCAT system. It's on the FestoolUSA.com website. Okay, go under the service tab, go to spare parts, and you can just look at it. You can hover on, it'll tell you the price. Now, here's what I want to make sure. Some people think a pad on a sander is a pot. It's not. You have to get that through our system partner. Okay? Okay, it's a consumable. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, you know how to make me laugh. Here's a question I just can't. Okay, I'm going to say this correctly. The MFT does come with smart power. It comes with smart pack. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is that it, guys? Okay. Once again, we're getting, I think we're getting better at this. Uh, we started out with just a few people here, and now more people get involved, and we love it. Uh, we love you guys. Please stay tuned, and we will continue doing this. Please, please be safe. Practice social distancing, and wash your hands. Thank you very much for attending Festool Live.